be contained. If you're a child of God here today, hear this. You cannot be contained. God has something great in store for you. He has a great life in store for you. He wants you to be great, and you cannot be contained. Let's look at the Bible this morning. Let's stand, please, and let's go to the Scriptures here, and let's talk about what God has to say. Let's hear what He has to say to us about His plan for Abraham and for us. When the men got up to leave, they looked down towards Sodom, and Abraham walked along with them to see them on their way. Then the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham what I'm about to do? Abraham will surely become a great and powerful nation, and all nations on earth will be blessed through him. For I have chosen him so that he will direct his children and his household after him to keep the way of the Lord by doing what is right and just, so that the Lord will bring about for Abraham what he has promised. You may be seated. God said that Abraham would surely become a great and powerful nation. God declared that Abraham would be great. What separated Abraham from the rest? What separated him from the people around him? It was his belief. It was his love for his God. He says in verse 19, For I have chosen him so that he will direct his children and his household after him to keep the way of the Lord by doing what is right and just so that the Lord will bring about for Abraham what he has promised. What was Abraham doing that pleased the very heart of God? That opened doors that were once closed for him? He believed and he obeyed. He followed his God. He worshipped the one true God. He not only worshipped Him, believed in Him, obeyed Him, but He also taught others to believe and to trust and to obey. You see, Satan couldn't contain Him. The world around Abraham could not contain Him. For God had declared that Abraham would be great. And God has declared today that you will be great. God has a perfect plan for your life. God made you to be someone amazing. And Satan wants to hold you back. Satan wants to restrict you. He wants to hinder you from being great. And he has been successful in many of our lives. Holding us back from being all that we can be. Matthew 11, 11. It says, I tell you the truth. Among those born of women, there has not risen anyone greater than John the Baptist. John the Baptist was sent as the forerunner to Christ. He was to prepare the way for Jesus Christ. He was a very humble man. Loved the Lord. Spoke the truth. Obeyed His heavenly Father. And the Lord said that born among women, there would not be anyone greater than John the Baptist. Talking about human beings. John the Baptist was one of the greatest human beings that ever walked the face of the earth. What made him so great? What made him so powerful? What made him so influential? Why did he gain such great success? It's because his God declared, and God declares to you here today, that you too can be great. You too can be powerful. You too can overcome. You too can have victory, if indeed... You will, as John the Baptist, as Abraham, follow the Lord. Follow Him fervently. 1 Corinthians 2.9 However, as it is written, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has conceived what God has prepared for those who love Him. We have a hard time thinking that God wants us to be great, that God wants us to be amazing, Why is that so hard for us to think that God would want such greatness for us? It's because we don't understand the depths of His love. I think many of us have a view of God that He's like a cosmic cop, just just there to to punish us any time we do something wrong. And that's all He's there for, is to reprimand and punish and rebuke and admonish. That's often our view of God. We have a hard time seeing God as as a loving, perfect 
patient, merciful, gracious, compassionate Father who wants just, just the best. He has your best interest in mind, but yet we have a hard time seeing Him in that light. But He is great, and He is good, and He is powerful. And He has greatness in store for you and for me, but He does ask us to do something in order to achieve that greatness. And that's to follow Him, to put Him first in our lives, to do what He asks us to do, to follow His instructions. For you see, when you follow God's instructions, His instructions lead to the good and perfect gifts that we pray for, that we long for, that we look forward to. We're praying to God for so many things. And God wants us to have so many things, so many wonderful things. But He does ask us to do something, and that's to follow Him to where those treasures lie that you're longing for, that you're looking for, that you're praying for. God said, Abraham, you're going to be great. And God is saying to you here today, you're going to be great. I have greatness in store for you. But now, I need you to do something. I need you to follow me to where that greatness is. I need you to listen to me. I need you to stay focused on me, to follow me. Don't drift away from me. Don't get in front of me. We would like to run in front of God. We like, we like to just, like little children, right? If parents, you know what that's like. You go into a store, and next thing you know, that child is halfway down the aisle before you know it. And that's how we are with God. We get so excited, we're so anxious, and we take off, and we get in front of God, and then we trip and we fall, or we become afraid, we become worried, anxiety overwhelms us. God says, slow down, slow down. We're going to get there. We're going to get there. Just follow me, listen to me, stay focused on me because I have greatness in store for you. You know, greatness is a choice. It really is. Greatness is a choice. Do you want to be great today? If you say yes, then God has a plan to how, for how you will achieve greatness. But we can shortchange ourselves. We can hinder ourselves. We can see ourselves in a different light than God sees us. God sees you as the apple of His eye. You are somebody special to God. You're not just happenstance. You just didn't happen to be here. God created you for a purpose, an amazing and great purpose. And God wants you to achieve that purpose in your life. It's been said that the only person you are destined to become is the person you decide to be. If you decide that you're going to follow Jesus, then you've chosen greatness. God doesn't give His children scorpions when they ask for a fish. He doesn't give them a rock when they ask for bread. God gives His children good and perfect gifts. He'll never leave you nor forsake you. Our God is great, and He wants His people to be great too. If you're a teacher, God wants you to be a great teacher. If you're a custodian, he wants you to be the best custodian you can be. If you're an engineer, he wants you to be a great engineer. If you're a musician, he wants you to be a great musician. If you're an ER technician, he wants you to be the best ER technician you can be. And he'll provide you with all the tools and resources you're going to need to be great. God wanted me to be great in serving Intel Corporation. And for 19 years, God has made me great in that workplace. I have excelled. I have prospered. Doors have opened for me that have been closed for other people. God wants you to achieve success, but achieving success in His way, not in your way, not in my way, in His way. And here is the message of the gospel. Jesus is the way. He is the truth, and He is the life that you and I are looking for. You want greatness? You want to achieve great success? Jesus is the way to great success. Jesus is the way. God warns us, however, of obstacles. There are obstacles to being great. Let me give you one. Discouragement. 
discouragement. Numbers 32, 7 through 9. It says this, Why do you discourage the Israelites from going over into the land the Lord has given to them? This is what your fathers did when I sent them from Kadesh Barnea to look over the land. After they went up to the valley of Eshcol and viewed the land, they discouraged the Israelites from entering the land the Lord had given them. There are people in our lives that will try to discourage us from becoming great. They'll try to persuade you from drifting away from the God you love. They'll bring you down. They'll tell you you're not good enough, that God, God's not a good and loving and perfect God. He, he can't provide for you. He can't take care of you. Those promises will never come true in your life. Those are just words on a piece of paper. They'll never come to life in your life. I've had people in my life that have tried to discourage me. I didn't get married until I was 45 years of age. I can tell you I was discouraged by a lot of people along that path that God had me on. God had work for me to do as a single man. God wanted me to accomplish things as a single man, things I, I wouldn't have been able to do as a married man. And so people tried to discourage me and, and tried to get me to leave the God I love. They said, just, just bag it, Pastor Ron, just walk away. Don't, don't put your trust in God. He's never going to provide someone special for you. Just give up. Walk away. He can't be that good. Look, you're 45 years of age. Nothing good's going to come for you. Just give it up. Just go back to the way you were living before. Don't you remember you were having fun the way you were living before? Go back to it. People try to discourage me from staying on the path that, I, that God had laid before me, that He had paved for me. And God has made a pathway for each and every one of you. But people are going to come alongside you and try to discourage you from going along that path. They're going to tell you to, to drift, to take a detour, to go to the left, to go to the right. Don't stay on course. It can't be that good. God can't be that good. Really, you believe in a, a God that you cannot see? There's all kinds of crazy things happening in the world. Are you sure God really exists? You're going to put all your hope and your trust in, in this unseen God? I said, yes. I am going to put my trust in Him. I'm not going to leave Him. I am going to stay focused on Him. At the age of 45, I was married. God blessed me in His time and in His way. God is great. God is good all the time. Never forget that. Satan wants to discourage you, and he also wants you to make you feel inferior. Satan wants you to feel inferior, like you're not good enough, that everybody around you has it going on, and everybody else has it together except you. Satan wants you to feel this big. 1 Timothy 4.12, listen to what Paul says to Timothy. Don't let anyone look down on you because you are young. But set an example for the believers in speech, in life, in love, in faith, and in purity. People look down upon you, and it's discouraging. They make you feel inferior as if you're not good enough, if you're not worthy. As if somehow you're never going to amount to anything. Don't let someone who gave up on their dreams talk you out of yours. Don't let someone who gave up on their dreams talk you out of yours by making you feel inferior, by discouraging you, by bringing you down to their level. Listen, God has greatness in store for you. He wants to lift you up. He wants you to rise up above your challenges, above those naysayers, above those who think little of you. Listen, when people think less of you than who you really are, look to Jesus. He'll tell you just how valuable you are. Anytime you want to know what your worth is, look at the cross. You'll see your value on the cross. God paid for your life with His own very Son. That's how much you're worth to God. God gave His very Son, Jesus Christ, 
as a gift. He put him to death that you might have life. God was showing us on that cross just how much he values you, just how precious you are to him. Don't let anybody tell you you're not worth anything, that you'll never amount to anything, that you'll never accomplish great things. Don't ever let them hold you back from being great. God does promise us that He will remove the obstacles. God says that He will take these discouragers, these individuals who make us feel inferior, He will help us remove them from our lives. Let's go down to Deuteronomy 31.8. It says this, The Lord Himself goes before you and will be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. You see, God encounters the obstacles before you do. God goes before you. We follow Him. And therefore, He's going to encounter the obstacles in advance of us getting there. What obstacles are you concerned about today? Are there any obstacles in your life? Any things you're worried about, afraid of right now? Think about it for a moment. What's causing you to become fearful? What's striking fear in your heart? What's bringing you worry and doubt and anxiety today? What is it? Do you know that God has already encountered that worry, that doubt, that fear. He's already been there. He's seen it all. And he has a plan, a perfect plan for how he's going to deliver you through it. God doesn't often take us uh, away from the challenges. Oftentimes he wants us to go through the challenges in order to mature us, to mold us, and shape us into the likeness of his son, Jesus Christ. Hardship in our lives is necessary. You think about it. You know, you think about a car and, 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 you know, before it's painted, you think about the grinding and the, and the sanding and, and the hammering that goes on to get that car just right before the paint is laid on. It's a lot of work before you can put the final touches on that car. We're kind of like that. God has, to, God has to hammer us sometimes. He has to sand us sometimes. He has to use a, a, a hammer and chisel And chip away at the slag, the dross that collects on us before he can put the final touches on us. And it's a very painful process many times. And we don't want to go through that. But God says it's necessary in order for you to shine, in order for you to be beautiful, to be amazing, to sparkle, to flourish. you got to go through it. But I'm going to be with you, God says. You're not going to go through it alone. Your your friends may think very little of you, but I think very highly of you, God says. You're the apple of my eye. I treasure you. You're a treasured possession to God. And don't let anybody tell you differently. God says you're someone amazing. 2 Chronicles 20, 17. You'll not have to fight this battle, says the Lord. Take up your position, stand firm, and see the deliverance the Lord will give you. O Judah and Jerusalem, do not be afraid, do not be discouraged, Go out to face them tomorrow, and the Lord will be with you. Listen, guys, we don't fight these battles alone. We have the King of kings and the Lord of lords standing with us, fighting for us. He says to them, you will not have to fight this battle. You see, if you let God go in front, God will fight the battle because he's going to encounter that battle. He's going to weaken the enemy so you can defeat the enemy. But when you're out in front of God, guess who's going to encounter the enemy first? You are. That's why God says, stay behind me. Let me go in front of you. Because Satan can't touch this. Let God be your guide. Zechariah 4, 6. Then he said to me, This is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. When you go through those difficulties, those challenges, those hardships, you have a guide. You have a counselor, the Holy Spirit of the living God. He gives you direction. He gives you instruction. He gives you guidance on how to get through that challenge you're facing that day. And this is what he says to do. He says to pick up his word, to mull over it and meditate on it, to not forget it. And wherever you go and whatever you do, God will be with you and you will see the pathway very clearly. You'll know which way to go. 
You'll know what to do. The question is, will you follow those instructions? Will you obey those instructions? Will you put them into practice in your life? It is true that the Word of God left on the pages of the Bible will accomplish nothing in our lives lest we put the Word of God into practice, apply it to the challenges that we're facing. God's Word is to be used. God's Word is to be applied. God's Word is to be applicable in our lives. And we have a choice. Again, greatness is a choice. You can choose to pick up the Word and read it, or you can choose not to. You can choose to follow Jesus, or you can choose not to. The choice is yours. It's mine. If you want to achieve greatness, choose Christ. If you want to choose to be successful, follow the Lord. If you want to see miracles, if you want to be blessed, stay behind Christ. Choose to follow the Lord. Stay behind Him. Let Him be your guide. You see, God reassures us that we cannot be contained. The world is going to try and hold us back. The world is going to try and strap us down. But God says that if we follow Him, we cannot be contained. Isaiah 40, 31. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. Did you hear that? Listen again. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They'll walk and not faint. That's what God promises you and me. If we hope in the Lord, hope in His strength, hope in His provisions, hope in His victories, hope in His love, His mercy, His grace, His compassion, put our hope in the Lord. And He says that He will renew our strength. You need strength today. You worn out, you spent, you need a little extra boost, a little extra energy. God says that He will renew your strength and that you will soar on wings like eagles. In other words, you'll soar over your problems, God says, if you hope in Him. There's times when God says, I don't want you to go through that. I want you to soar over it. I want you to fly over that challenge. I want you to go around that problem. They will run and not grow weary. In other words, God says, you can go the distance. There are some people out there saying, you're never going to make it. You're never going to make it. You're not good enough. You're not fast enough. You're not strong enough. You're not smart enough. You're never going to make it. What does God say? That you will run and not grow weary. That you'll walk and not faint. In other words, you're going to make it. God says, you're going to make it. You are going to be someone great. Choose greatness. Choose Christ. Isaiah 54, 17, no weapon that is formed against you will prosper. And every tongue that accuses you in judgment, you will condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their vindication is for me, is from me, declares the Lord. Again, no weapon that is formed against you will prosper. That's another promise God has made you. He said, people are going to come after you. They're going to attack you. They're going to try and discourage you, make you feel inferior. But God says, if you put your hope in me, if you follow me, none of their weapons can harm you. None of their weapons can destroy you. And every tongue that accuses you in judgment, you will condemn. In other words, God says, you will rise above your enemies. You'll stand tall above them. You'll soar above them your enemies for this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord this is your heritage this is what God has reserved for you and for me and their vindication is from me declares the Lord you see God has great things in store for you and for me but God wants you to choose to be great he wants you to decide to be somebody special the choice is yours, the choice is mine. We can settle for mediocrity, simply being mediocre. Or we can choose to be great, someone great, someone amazing. You limit yourselves, we limit ourselves. But when God looks at us, He doesn't see limits. 
God says, they can't contain me. And if they can't contain me, they can't contain you. For who can contain the Holy Spirit? If you're a child of God here today, the Holy Spirit lives in you. And if the Holy Spirit lives in you, who can contain that? Who can contain Him? Nobody. But you can choose to ignore the Holy Spirit. You can choose to settle for less than God's best. And some Christians today are settling for less than God's best. Let's not settle for mediocrity. Let us strive for greatness. Let us thrive for perfection. Let us thrive for God. Let's bow our heads. Let's go to the Father in prayer. Loving God, I thank you so much for the...